welcome to the third episode of the Padawans podcast. I am your host, Lucas, and with me, as always, is my co-host, David. Hey. Wow, that was very lackluster. (laughs) It's been a it's been a long week. I Uh, I mean, if you're watching the YouTube video, you can see behind me that we're doing a lot of renovations. That's just like an unfinished wall. And uh, I, I, you saw, you I, saw pictures. It, yes. what, do you, what do you think? It turned out it was really great. Good. It was great. He did a great Man, job. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm From tired. what I understand, he's going to throw a green screen back there. Oh, yeah. It's a good idea. That's a great idea. <laughs> no, he's not actually going to do that. But um, guys, it's another week. It's another episode. Uh, we are on what, what episode are we on David? We're on episode season one, episode three shadow of malevolence. This is the second of the malevolence arc. Mm-hmm. If we would like to say that, mm-hmm. um, do you want me to go into the synopsis as the guy who reads the, well, how do you want to do this one? I mean, you made the notes. Why don't, why don't you kind of, uh, why don't you do the piloting and I'll I'll be your co-pilot. I'll be All your right. Ahsoka to your Anakin. Today. Okay, sounds good. All right, this episode, Shadow of the Malevolence, was directed by Brian Callen O'Connell, written by Stephen Melching. The synopsis. A deadly weapon unleashed the Separatist battleship, the Malevolence. Advances un- unopposed through uh, Republic space, tearing any ship that strands in its path. After a daring rescue and narrow escape, Anakin Skywalker prepares a counterattack on the enemy ship and its diabolical droid commander, General Grievous. That's pretty good. I feel like I still kill it all the time. You've got a you got got, a a a general's kind of sound. I I do. I should be in the show. Too bad. You should do a podcast. Yeah, we should do podcast. All right, so let's get into this. So we begin in the bomber hangar, uh, Ad- Admiral Yularen, which, by the way, he is very important. So pay attention to him. He's in a lot of content going forward. Have we um, met? I feel like we've met him. Yes. Um, well, do you want me to tell you? Uh, no, I mean, we'll okay. get there. But okay. I do feel he's, like he's, he's also the voice at the beginning of the episode. Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. The actor, the voice actor. Yes. And and um, I think it's Tom Kane. Mm-hmm. I want to say it's Tom Kane because he oh, also does Yoda. Different ones? Yeah, so he does the uh, beginning. He does Yolaren and he does Yoda. Um. Oh, it's the same guy. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Actually, actually, so that's kind of cool. Um, but Yolaren. Yeah, we'll just. I think we'll just there's got to be like five people that do this show. It seems like it seems like everyone's like just way multi talented and yeah. has tons of. Absolutely. I mean, I, I know that that's like a theme of animated shows, but these guys are really top notch. Oh, they are really top notch. They did a good job. Yeah. Um, so back to the story. Yularen uh, is talking to the clone pilots with Anakin ne- standing next to him, explaining the strategy. Anakin believes that a small strike force of bombers can infiltrate the malevolence and destroy the bridge of the ship along with uh, Grievous on it. Um, at one point, the the clones are very eager and they get up and say, uh, we can do anything, General. And then uh, we get to and then they yeah. also say stuff about their fallen comrades, um, because this ship, the, the malevolence is, has uh, taken out a whole lot of ships and clones in the process. I mean, even in this episode, like we just I mean, the the up to this point in the episode they're just really tearing through ships left and right oh yeah absolutely really making them i mean this thing's like quite the weapon oh yeah absolutely but uh shadow squadrons got uh got it on lock oh yeah absolutely got on lock um yeah ahsoka and plo Plo Koon are very skeptical of anakin's plan which is funny because back so back to the episode before they're interlocked. They're they very much like Plo Koon, obviously that relationship. So they kind of think similar. So I found that kind of funny when when watching the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously the clones are very confident in themselves. Um, Anakin asks Matchbox um, uh, if they think they can do it. And he says, yeah, we something along those lines. Yes, we can do it. 
Um, so that's nice to see. Um, well, he says he's never failed before. Yes. He says, yes, that's he says if, you're put, if you're sitting in Shadow Squadron, then yeah, it's going to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and, and to think about the last couple episodes, we're seeing the clones more confident mm-hmm. um, and more sure of themselves and becoming more characters instead of being background guys. You're really remembering names and stuff like that. And that really, that's really the best part of this whole show. Um, as you start learning more about and watching episodes, you really start to make connections to some clones. Um, yeah. So that's really, yeah. really, really fun. Mm-hmm. Um uh, we then move into the malevolence, destroying another Republic of Editor destroyer. Which, um, which, by the way, this thing, it's massive. Looks like it's it looks like it's like five times the ship of the Ventors. Yeah, the Venator. Yeah, the Venator. Uh, yeah, the Venator destroyers. Yeah, absolutely. It is really big. I and you and you get that p- that pan of them going across, and just, you see the down just destroyer through it. Yeah, and the destroyers yeah. are pretty big uh, uh, cruisers as well. So that's kind of, that's, that's uh, yeah. I mean, they do a really good job of the animation and the camera view of, like, looking at the comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we transport, so we see a transport attempting to jump to hyperspace to escape the weapon, but ultimately fails. Um, they get caught in the ion cannon. Um, their systems go down, and they ultimately get destroyed. Uh-oh. Yeah, I I liked the uh, I liked the little cut to inside Grievous's ship and uh, the the droids like uh, I can't seem to hit anything mm-hmm. and <laughs> Grievous <laughs> if he's he's bit, he's so mad <laughs> yeah and he destroys it but um, I think I think that that droid that says I can't that droid that says I can't hit anything I think that's the droid that in the last episode. Uh, made that comment about like, well, I'm programmed like this. Like, I think it's the same guy. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the same voice actor. Well, um, no, I mean, like, I think it's the. I imagine oh, it's the same, that it's the same uh, droid. Okay. It's the same droid. It possibly could be. Um, all B ones are kind of notoriously the dumb ones. Yeah, to be honest. Um, but um, that could definitely be. Um, I also like the. That's it's my, so, that's it's, my head cannon. No, yeah, and I, lo- and I, and I love and I love how uh, the well the droid next to him before he says uh, I can't seem to hit anything, says it's so much easier when they're not shooting back. Like yeah, of course it is. It's duh. Like come on, um, they're not, they're not then, the smartest. Yeah, they aren't. I and they make clone. Uh, they make stormtroopers look good, which is, I didn't think was very hard to do, but obviously it is. Hey. Um, <laughs> um, so we cut to a hologram of Count Dooku uh, behind Grievous stating, uh, Grievous, these, uh, those battle droids are expensive. The Jedi are never that harsh with their clones. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's true. I mean, you don't ever see them. Uh, you never see the Jedi treat the clones harshly. Except, yeah, but they're like living, breathing things, right? Like, I yeah, get that's that you, true. You do like, have the separation, but I mean, I think Count Dooku's got a point. Like, uh, up until that point, I'd never thought, oh, yeah, there's probably a cost associated with this. Like, yeah, I mean, they're not, they don't have souls, but they still have price tags. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're not cheap by any means, but neither are the clones. So, um, I think in one of the episodes, they, they, uh, they talk about how expensive the clones are, and it's it's very like banking clan stuff. That's gonna be hmm. interesting. That'll be at, fun looking at stuff like that. Um, so Dooku gives Grievous coordinates uh, of a new target for the malevolence. It is the Republic's secret outer rim medical center, um, which is located next to it's it's in the same sector as Naboo, which is mm-hmm. similar to everybody. Whether you've seen the films or not, Naboo is a is a very popular planet. It's where Palpatine is actually from. Spoiler first... alert! Oh, I'm yeah, kidding. yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. Everyone knows yeah. that's I mean, where he's from. That's where Queen Amidala is from. from. Yeah, and that's where the first movie takes place. A lot of stuff actually in the Clone Wars happens on Naboo, surprisingly. So we'll get to explore that that world a little cool, bit. Cool. Yeah. 
Um, also, if destroyed, the Republic won't have any won't wouldn't have anywhere uh, to take their uh, wounded troops. Um, Dooku also says he feels very confident leaving the ship under the general's command. But really, how long will Dooku's confidence last? Do you think, David? Uh, see, the thing is, is I don't, I don't know. I really got to thinking in this episode that like Dooku's always one step ahead of the Republic because he's got Sidious just feeding yeah. him facts all day yeah. long. That's so like I, I mean I don't know I if if it was all if I was playing with house money like sure I'll I'll like Grievous have a whack at it we'll see what happens yeah and I just I love how <laughs> I love how nobody is like uh Chancellor well, who are your sources and like <laughs> they don't ever they don't ever like question it no or like in in the droids or like, well yeah because he feeds he feeds the Republic info too yeah so it's, it's like. like so uh, so Dooku's like uh Lord Sidious and it's like when like the one thing that I always wonder is when does Grievous sh- when does Grievous meet Sidious for the first time I I that would be interesting another story to um uh go into um so so anyways so back to the action so we we move over to Anakin on the, uh, the, the, the ship, uh, they're sending out, um, the squadron, uh, Ahsoka's like, oh yeah, where's, where's my ship? And, uh, Anakin's like, no, nah, dude, you're, uh, you're, you're sitting back, back seat. Yeah. You're sitting my co-pilot. I need somebody to watch my She's dad. Like, what? No. So, <laughs> and I don't, they get in the Y wings and, by the way, like one of my favorite ships, back, it, Star Wars Battlefront fans know what I'm talking yes. about. Yes, that, that thing was a tank. Yes, it was. But but yeah, she uh, she gets in the back seat. She's so mad. She's like, "You have R two. You don't need me." He's like, "Yeah, I do. You're great." Oh yeah, for sure. They, uh, they I I think Ahsoka is uh, hesitant on Anakin's flying. I think he has quite the reputation. Oh yeah, I mean, look at Phantom Menace. Let's try spinning. That's a good trick. <laughs> Phantom Menace hardly. I mean, he's like uh, I mean, he eleven in that movie. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, spinning. That's a good trick. Yeah. What does and, this do? <laughs> and pay pay attention to the next episode because they do a callback to that. Oh, really? So I'll give you a little bit of insight to the next episode. Yes, they 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 uh, they they call back to that quote which is funny um but back to back to this episode sorry i got a little off track that's okay um so the conversation between continues with ahsoka accusing anakin of not liking the way she flies so i mean it's kind of funny like we're saying anakin's got a reputation of of being a pretty good pilot so you would think ahsoka would have the same like information you know, yeah. yeah like he would give her pointers or what i but like she's still a padawan like that's the one thing that some that i somehow are well anakin and uh myself forget that she is still a padawan so she's not really ready for all that responsibility quite yet so i think that's more or less his thing he knows that she can do it but he wants to pull her back still because he doesn't think she's ready so so Back to the action. So as they are getting ready to to suit up and fly out and go attack the ship, they find out that the separatists are attacking the the medical convoy. Hmm, I wonder where they got that information from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they they figure out that the medical station is probably the next target because um, I Anakin's you know can predict the future. I guess. He's like, oh Naboo, yeah, my I like a chick there. It's probably that one. Yeah, we'll yeah, there. yeah. He's like, oh Naboo, that sounds familiar. That's, uh, I, wonder, I, I bet it's that been. one next to where my girlfriend is. Like, we yeah, go my, to that yeah, one. my yeah, my wife from there. <laughs> oh wait, I said that out loud. I'm sorry. Oh, oh I was just kidding, guys. That doesn't. doesn't so they happen. head out. Pl- Plo Koon decides that he's gonna join them, which you get is cool. I really yeah. like. I mean, this is. I mean. Plo Koon, well, it's funny because Dave Filoni's favorite character is Plo Koon. 
Oh, really? So he really enjoys Plo Koon a lot. So seeing him the first couple of episodes is kind of neat to see his background because we really don't we really don't know anything about Plo Koon or anything about him. Mm-mm. But so they head out. Uh, yeah, they uh, they head out. You see that that shot. The the Y wings are are leaving the station. The all the other mm-hmm. clones are pumped. Yep. Uh, we see the medical station for the first time. We see the Camino in. So I, that was kind of cool. That I mean, it makes sense that they're the ones that are kind of running the thing. But yeah, absolutely. Like all those Bacta tanks. I mean, this place is stocked full. They said like sixty thousand people. Yeah, sixty thousand wounded clones. Yeah, it's 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 a huge facility, um, and like it it's very very important strategically, like Dooku said, because if they destroy that, then where the only logical place is to take them to Camino yeah. or Coruscant. And um, comparison from Camino and Coruscant, they're very much out of the way, whereas Naboo is pretty much in the center uh, of those two planets. So. It's very, very strategic planning Mm -hmm. um, and very important to the Republic at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, We uh, we we get intel. The the medical station finds out that there's an attack that's impending. They need to evacuate Mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. The Camino in is like, uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon because we are loaded to the gills. And a lot of these people, we can't even move that quickly. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's it's interesting to see how they were able to do that. Um, and like the Kaminoans are huge in the uh, Star Wars canon, especially right now with Bad Batch. Um, oh, I haven't it, seen that. I, I'm holding out on watching that. Yes. So we will d- eventually get there, but you'll. I would suggest watching it before and then we can do a rewatch of that so we both can see things. Okay, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the Kaminoans were very, very interlocked with everything that was going on during this period. So they're from Kamino. How do you say it? Is it Kaminoans? Uh, no, it's, Kamin- it's Kaminoans. 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 Oh, okay. Yep. Um, so we get back to um, oh, so Obi Wan actually shows up in the Hollow. Um, assures the uh, administrator, which by the way, he's already met that administrator. She's the one that he meets oh, is with it her? in yeah in episode two actually. Um, Where did you find that Camino. out? Um, so that's just kind of this the nerd in me. I I kind of know these things. Um, but yeah, she's Lama Sue. She uh was the one that was in the room with um. She's the first person that he yes. meets. Yes, 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 yes. And he in and she Attack and she's the, the one. Yep, and she's the one that takes uh. Um, takes Obi Wan to Jango Fett, mm-hmm. so he knows mm-hmm. her by name. So he says Lama Sue, um, and and he assures her that not only his fleet but also Anakin with Shadow Squadron, uh, are are on their way as well. So we're so we're back to Grievous. Uh, he's on the Malevolence. He's complaining. Um, they are also headed to the medical center, but. The Nava computer has taken them in this really roundabout way mm-hmm. around the nebula. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, the the strike force goes in through the nebula. Yes, it's very, <laughs> it's very typical Anakin in a way. It's um, almost like very typical Star Wars in a yes, way. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, just just that Anakin knows this route. Yes. It's so funny. Um, but yeah, Ahsoka's like, well, we're gonna how are we gonna get through this through this uh nebula? We we the and scanners don't like, even work. Just use the force. That's all you need. Well, yeah, basically, yeah. Basically using the force or feeling their way through the nebula. Which is, which which is great for them, but the clones don't do yeah, so well. <laughs> yeah, it's just like how, like like if I'm matchbox, I'm like we don't have the force. <laughs> That's exactly like, what, what I'd be like. Like uh, what what do you expect us to do? We're gonna hit things. This isn't this isn't just, safe. Just follow my taillights, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. He's just like, <laughs> oh, just follow the just follow me. It's gonna be okay. Like, okay, thanks, guy. Really appreciate it. It's and great. 
Well, and and then the uh, then the uh, the Nibre start showing up. Those giant like yes. space stingray looking things, and they take out Matchbox. They, I mean, he almost blows like up. He, yeah, absolutely. Um, so first, before that even happens, um, the Separatist ship uh, back on the Elevalence, uh, Grievous gets a hollow from Dooku. Um, again. People just come on, figure it out. We know who the in between is. Um, that the Republic has <laughs> dispatched a strike a strike force led by uh, Skywalker and to destroy their new ship. Obviously, Grievous says, "I'll use this to in my advantage because he's arrogant." And Dooku instructs him, "Don't underestimate Skywalker," which I mean, he may be foolish, but he, he's a, a he's a badass. Yes, he is a badass. Absolutely. Um. So Anakin then, so we're back to Anakin. Anakin reveals that the nebula is an old smuggler's route that he learned from when he was a boy as a slave on Tatooine. Great. So that, that's great, uh, great for foreshadowing. Yeah. Great oh, this is going to go well. Yeah. You haven't seen it in the last 15 years. Yeah, yeah. sure. We'll be yeah, fine. Uh, yeah, we'll be good. It's okay. And obviously Ahsoka's just like everybody else. Like Plo, Plo Koon's. He's like, really? yeah, we need to get out of here. This yeah. Yeah. Foolish. After, yeah. After Anakin uh, pretty much says it's the Balmora run and Plo Koon goes, the Balmora run. <laughs> like, it's like this is this is the nesting place of the the knee Uh yeah, And then uh, you see, I mean, there's dozens of them and they, yeah, they're they're massive. They, was, they those are. are. They're massive stingrays. They're space I feel stingrays. like I've read about them before. I feel like that's not the only time they get mentioned. I, I think they might have been mentioned in a Legends book, possibly. I can't remember which one. So, like, my sweatiness of nerdiness is not really showing right now right. for this part. But, um, yeah, they – and, I mean, the shot in – the shot of, the like, the yellow sun thing – in the like the nebula itself, and then the stingrays were all going around it, like mm-hmm. underneath it, trying to travel up to it. That was a cool shot. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that. But um, yeah. What what happens to one of the bombers? You were just talking about it, right? Well, yeah. So uh, it, it's Matchbox, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He gets scammed. Or Matchstick. His, matchstick. He gets scammed. Uh, his his. Bomber catches fire. He's able to put it out though, and he's but he's like, man, I, we really took some damage here. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, so, uh, so they get through uh, relatively unscathed, other than Matchstick Shadow Squadron. Um, they they appear at the medical depot just as Malevolent shows up. Oh so, man, great timing. Yeah. Well. <laughs> When you got the same guy commanding both sides of the <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of it's kind of easy to do that. <laughs> so so Grievous sees them, he sends out uh a counter assault to, to attack the fighter squadron. Uh the Mavelins then takes down the transport the medical transport ships that are trying to escape with with relative ease. Yeah. Um I does he? Do we watch the ships getting blown up, or are they just taking heavy fire? I didn't. I didn't um. I, uh. So, are you talking about the ships that are right next to the medical? The detail? transport ships that are leaving the medical transport as we get there. So I think we see one blow up for sure. Mm-hmm. Um. They're definitely not doing well. No, they aren't. They're they're like uh, what's the what's the old saying? Fish in a bucket. Is that what it is? Uh yeah, I haven't heard that. That's a uh, great it's, thing. It's like shooting. Uh, oh, oh, shooting bar- fish in a barrel. Shooting fish in a barrel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So it's kind of like that. They're kind of sitting ducks at that point. But um, so it does take. So, down- yeah. So so they so they take down the ships. Yeah. Uh, then, I mean, the Shadow Squadron is taken on heavy fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there's evasive maneuvers. Ahsoka's like. Anakin, we got to get out of here. Anakin's like, no, we got to keep going. This is going to be fine. Uh, Mm -hmm. The the clones lose one ship. So, so that the malevolent shoots an ion cannon at uh, Anakin in the squadron. He's like, let's head up. Let's go straight, you know, get to the edge of the the blast and we'll be fine. 
and uh, they almost make it. I mean, they all but a couple ships. They lose three ships. Yeah, three. Or um, four. and then uh, Matchsticks uh, bomber actually explodes. Uh, yeah. I I feel like when I watched that, I saw his ship hit another ship as it was trying to get out of the blast zone. But then they then they they do a damage report afterwards, and they say that they only lost one ship, and that three others lost power. Yeah, yeah. That I don't know if that was right. just. I don't know if that was just. I I, I must have just seen uh, something that wasn't actually there. No, that's definitely possible. I mean, it's it's an animated show, so like. But yeah, so they aren't... so they make it over, and uh, as they start to approach the the galley, you hear, I love you hear one of the droids blurt. I have a bad feeling about yep, this, yep, which yep, is just yep, like yes. that legendary Obi Wan saying that you see all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a classic Star Wars quote for sure. I have a bad feeling about this, and it's a it's every single Love time. It. It's, it's a droid. It's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as they but as they start to get closer, you see, uh, Plo Kloom, He's like, you know, we're not gonna make it. Ahsoka's like we need to find a new plan. We need to get out of here. And Anakin's yep. like, no, we're fine. He's, but he's, then Plo yeah, Kloon mentions that like, Hey, like we could try and take down the ion cannon and it might implode, which is a great, great theory. Oh yeah. It's great. I, it's great thinking on his part. So, so Anakin finally gives in, he knows that he's going to lose his entire squadron if he doesn't try and uh, blow up the, uh, the cannon if he goes for the galley, he's going to be the only one that makes it. So they right. they divert. They manage to blow up the, the ion cannon. Um, but then I they don't do enough damage to for General Grievous to really notice. So yeah. as he's getting ready, they're like lining up to shoot upon the uh, the medical depot. Mm -hmm. He fires, and sure enough, it, it implodes. It causes some real heavy damage to the ship. Yeah, absolutely. Like, that's... Um, you really see Anakin's character of like he's he's very when when Ahsoka's arguing with him like and Plo Koon kind of finally steps in and is like we gotta destroy like yes we could destroy Grievous but if we destroy the Ion Cannon we save everybody else yeah so it's kind of you're seeing the split uh, and then you ultimately see him make the correct decision which. Which is great. Which most of the time he does, but... Real respect. It, yeah, real respect. But, I mean, as you know, if you've seen the whole saga, it's not always like that with the Skywalkers. <laughs> so... He has um, his good days. Yep, yep. Uh, the Skywalker trait. Headstrong. Do anything, but it's always in good intent. Good, uh... What is that? Good intent. Yeah, with good intent. But, yeah. So, so we so, <laughs> uh, we see uh we see the the ship implode. Grievous is stuck. He knows he's in trouble. Yep. Uh, three star destroyers appear. Obi Wan's in one of them. He's ready to you know assist the the ship and and help Anakin you know defend the medical depot. Uh, but then we find out that uh the Malevolence is stuck, uh, can't get out of hyperdrive. It is basically like barely crawling out of there. And uh, Obi Wan just has free reign over this thing. I mean, oh, yeah. And they're really laying down heavy fire. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, three Venator Star class Star Destroyers, like that's nothing to scoff at. Um, so they really like lay it into Grievous for sure. Um, and it was like, it's so funny because it's like and you'll see this relationship like here's the best thing that i will say about clone wars it makes the quote from obi-wan in episode four so much more real because if you watch the prequels as like a whole as 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 they're meant to be watched and you don't watch the clone wars that that quote in episode four when he's talking to luke doesn't really make sense because you only the, really I see, fought with your father in the Clone Wars. That, well, the, I thought fought with your father in the Clone Wars. He was a great pilot, and he was a good friend. Like you don't really see the good friend no. part. 
No. You seem. You, I mean, you. They're very combative you, in the movies. Yes, very combative, except for a little bit towards the end in episode three. Like but by then, it's a little. By too then, late. it's too. By then, it's too late. So this really does justice. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. for the whole prequel trilogy, this show does a a whole lot for the series and for yeah. the saga as a whole. But, um. So as Obi Wan's going after the Separatists, Anakin and Ahsoka get out of the fighter. Plo Koon congratulates Anakin on on his leadership. Um, the Lama Su, who's the Kaminoan, congratulates uh, Anakin as well. But Anakin also is very concerned. Yeah, she said you saved a whole bunch of lives today. But then Anakin goes, "Well, I also lost some too." So there's a perspective that he takes, which is very much. If you're a leader, you care about everybody, not just right. your own success. So that's right. good. Um, and then as he's walking away, Lama Su talks to uh, Ahsoka. She mentions to says, Ahsoka, yeah. Yeah, she says he's a curious Jedi. And, and Ahsoka goes, he's one of a kind. And then the last shot, um, I don't know if you were paying attention to Anakin's stance, but he has his hands behind his back. And that's very reminiscent of him looking out in the beginning of Empire. He has that stance where he's got behind mm. his back. He he it's very much foreshadowing. I did not everything. I didn't catch that. I mean, yeah. I watched I, but yeah, that's like such a watch, subtle little nod. As you watch the entire series, there's more moments like that. Hmm. So they D- Dave Filoni does a great job doing nods and Easter eggs and stuff like that. So now time for the ranking of the episode. David, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I want you to go first. Okay. Um, I will say it is a Jedi Knight. Um, it was okay. Um, the, this arc in particular, not the greatest. It's probably lower on my list of, of arcs in Star Wars. Um, and like I've always said, season one is still a little rougher to get through, but once you get through it, it, it goes, it goes, trust me. So stay with us. We're going to be knocking out more episodes. We'll get to a lot of the important arcs and David will have his mind blown just along with you guys. Just wait. It's going to be awesome. Um, but I would say it's a Jedi Knight. It was okay. I'll, I'll give it a I'll give it a night too. I mean, it was very it was kind of predictable. It was, yeah. you know, bad things happen and then they don't, and then now we're good, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was Pretty conflict much. conflict resolution. Um, but I will say so. This is definitely an episode that I remember seeing maybe once or twice back in the day. Like I remember yeah. this one. Oh yeah. No, I I I think it's it stands up on its own. Uh, but. I just feel like you get the sense that the malevolence is like such an awesome, you know, destructive weapon. weapon yeah. And they, uh, I mean, they granted they do lose some guys, they lose half their squadron, but part of me yeah. was like, man, like they really kind of make quick easy. work of that. Yeah. 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 It, it does kind of seem like that for sure. Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, that's J- the Jedi episode. Knight. Yep. Jedi Knight for both of us. I think that's a reasonable. It's 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 been kind of down from the other two episodes, but let me tell you, there's gonna be some seasons where you're gonna have Grand Grandmaster for two of them in a row. What uh, do we have? One episode left of Malevolence. Yes. Is it a three episode arc? Yep, it's a three. So we're gonna arc. finish up the Malevolence arc next week. Yes, we will finish the Malevolence arc next week. Um, now we're going to get into Star Wars news. The only yeah, thing that awesome. was really, that was really released was Disney gallery. Um, they do the behind the scenes for all of their Disney plus shows. So WandaVision, um, Falcon and the winter soldier Mando. Uh, I don't think they did one for clone wars, but they've done pretty much the main line of Disney plus it's the behind the scenes mm-hmm. they're going to go into. So they did the behind the scenes for season two but they purposely left out season uh, ep- the finale of season two. And we all know what happens in, in season two finale. 
for Star Wars fans, for people that haven't seen the show, we're not going to go into it. It, It's very... It, I would say wait and wait to watch this. It comes out August 25th, but wait to watch it until you've watched the entire series. And it's the last episode is very much... It's, prob- it's, it's a top five Star Wars moment for me. Wow. Hands down. <laughs> so... That's uh, that's one thing. And then I was actually down in uh, David's Neck of the Woods and I gave him the High Republic books. So he is currently reading. He how far are you in the light of the Jedi? Uh, I'm on like uh, I'm on like uh, chapter two of is it? It's yeah. Light of the Jedi. Yep. Of Light of the Jedi. Um, first impressions so far. Uh. Wow, they just killed it's a, everybody. It's a lot of world building. It's a lot of <laughs> it's it's it, it and it and it was hard for me because a lot of the Star Wars content that comes out is based on the on on uh characters that I've seen on screen. So when I first read the book, uh read and listened to it, and if you guys are audio learn or audio people, go to Audible, go to Apple, go to books on your Apple Mac or wherever you get your um auto uh audiobooks listen to star war any star wars book the quality is great it. or go to your local indie bookstore yes or do and that and buy it and support your local bookstore yes or you do that um uh but i will tell you the the audiobooks are the way to go um, all right they, is it good voice acting great phenomenal voice acting okay. phenomenal voice acting um, so that was able, I was able to, um, really pick on stuff and, uh, pick on which character was which because the mark, the, because the voice actor or the voice narrator does a really good job with voices. So, and um, I and I can't say, I can say, I could go on and on about the high Republic. It's a great, I, so I wanted to ask you a question without giving away anything in the book. Okay. Um, one so one comment i like to i'd like to mention is i love world building and that's pretty much all this first chapter is is just kind of creating the universe of like what is like a normal day in the life of like someone in the star wars universe because you really only get the highlight reel when you're watching the movies and you're watching the tv shows yeah this is very much just like oh yeah no we're just you know going about our lives but my question is so in the in the very first chapter they're basically transporting from the inner the the inner core to the outer rim. Yep, to Starlight Beacon. And they're talking about like there's sleeping quarters and there's uh there's, you know, not very much room for activities, even though these people really should have room for activities because it's like a long it's described my impression is it's a longer trip, right? Yes, yes because so So in the in the movies they always make everything seem like it's a 60 second joy ride how long does it take even in hyper space to get from the inner core to the outer rim do you so, know so uh, what's what is a parsec what's a 12 parsec run um so i don't know i don't know the nitty gritty of it has it I ever know. been explained it's explained in this book oh, okay so hyperspace is fairly it, okay so hyperspace has always been a thing but plotting out routes is fairly new to the universe in Unlike, this book it will in the universe at this time okay there haven't been hyperspace lanes created in the outer rim specifically mm-hmm. so they're using they're creating stuff like starlight starlight beacon is supposed to be the well the beacon for the republic in the outer rim so that they can communicate with the outer rim planets um unlike uh in the prequel trilogy and on where it's all been it's all been uh explored so so the the my question of how long does it take to go through hyperspace will be explained eventually uh, somewhat yes. maybe yes it was somewhat um it'll it'll give you it'll take some time it'll be good but cool. yeah 
Absolutely. Well, that's it. That's everything, right? Yeah, that is everything. Anything, um, anything else you want to add? We've got a lot of new stuff going on. Uh, where can the good people follow us on social media? We're at the Podwans, P O D W A N S, on Twitter. Yes. We're at the Podwans Podcast on TikTok and Instagram. Yep. yep. Uh, go follow us on YouTube. Uh, rate us five stars on Apple. Yep. Uh, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know what you guys want to say. We might. We're talking about maybe having some guest stars here down the road. We're getting some yep. interest there. That's really exciting. Yep, yep it is. It's. I, we've got some in the next couple of weeks. So David will be gone one of the weeks. So I will have a guest on. It won't be your typical. We'll go through an arc or go through a a um, an episode. It'll be more 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 towards us just talking about star wars in general yeah so if you're into something like that give it a listen um but yeah the next couple of weeks are going to be fun um uh but yeah and also we i don't know if everybody's into discord or whatever we have our own discord server um it's at the padawans uh padawans uh podcast um you guys you guys can connect with us you guys can connect with people that are in the server um it's a great way it's it's what we didn't have as kids we didn't have a community or a board or a base uh no, to talk you had about to like, star wars you, you had, had to, to like hide in your basement yes you had to, hide you had to in like check the aisle at uh, the hasbro aisle yeah, at the yeah, grocery store much. to make sure or go to the comic book saying that i'm buying this uh you were like you could Man, going to the comic book store was still back in the nineties like a dirty word where I'm from. Yes, absolutely. Like you, you nerd, <laughs> you nerd. Now but it's cool. Now, now it's, it's like cool. hipster. It's mainstream. It's Man, mainstream. Pokemon cards are like in the like. I have to go to my mom's house and dig out my Pokemon cards because apparently they're worth money now. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I'm, but I'm here on, for it though. On that note, uh, we will see you guys next week. Uh, yeah. for What's the title episode? Episode title. Hold on. I'll pull it up. It is Destroy Malevolence. Hey, that sounds familiar. Destroy Malevolence. So that will be uh, the end of the Malevolence arc. Uh, but we will see you guys next week. May the force be with you. It's canon. Be happy.